In this video, we're going to be using Crown and Crane Barista and the Rex console razor for the first time. Stay tuned. Hey there folks and welcome back for another video. I'm your host CDB and thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. As always, before we get into the content, a word from our sponsor, Leaf. This video is brought to you by our good friends at Leaf and you know I love Leaf products. I love using the Leaf, which you've seen me use many, many times on the channel. I also love using the Twig. You've seen that a lot on the channel as well. If you'd like to save 5%, Use discount code IMCDB right there and save 5% while shopping with the good folks at Leaf. And now, back to the video. And all right, we are back and we have a great one for you today, or at least I hope. We're going to start out with the soap today, which is Crown and Crane Barista. And this comes to you for $16.95 for 5 ounces and on a cost chart there. That is a good price of $3.39 an ounce. We give that a score of 4 out of five. This is a very nice, pleasant, to my nose, warm fragrance. I'm going to put the scent description on the screen right there for you. It's based on a fragrance called Coffee Break, and it is very nice. Some of the notes, coffee, lemon, lavender, woods, and there's some other stuff too. Very, very nice to my nose. I give it a score of 4.5 out of five in uh, quality in terms of the scent. It's really nice. In terms of scent strength for me, slightly under medium, sort of knocking on the door of medium. I'd give that a score of 3.5 out of five. And this was really, really easy to lather up this morning. I'll show you a lather shot right there. We got it nice and creamy without a lot of effort. I give it a score of 4.5 out of five in ease of use. In terms of the ingredients, this is a tallow base soap. We'll put the ingredients for you on the screen right there. And again, this is an easy soap to work with and we look forward to using it today. I love Crown and Crane. Now the razor for today, it'll be the first time we ever use this razor. This is the Rex console, which is the first ever adjustable stainless steel slant razor. As you can see there, the blade is slanted in there and it is adjustable. The numbers on this are very easy to read and you see your adjustment wheel right there. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and adjust it some for you. We'll turn it around here. And as you can see there, the blade gap gets larger as you adjust it upward. As I adjust it back down, it gets more narrow, and that blade is definitely slanted in there. I think someone made the comment yesterday that it was barely slanted. It's not super torqued, but it is slanted. It's a very, very handsome razor. It feels great in the hand. This knurling is terrific. This is their new diamond type knurling. I'm not sure whether I prefer this one or the knurling on the Ambassador, which I think is called like Sure Grip or something. That one is terrific. This one is terrific too, and it sort of adds to the look of this razor. The console name, by the way, was meant to sort of uh, pay homage to the German heritage of the slant razor because I think console, I think according to the map, was the same rank as an ambassador. So something along those lines. Uh, it is a handsome razor, but I will say this. It is not perfection. I'm going to roll in a couple of shots as I'm talking to you there of the underplate. And you can see there's a lot of very obvious machining marks on the bottom and they're not all sort of uniform. So there's machining marks sort of going all over the place. At the price of this razor, which is $350, super pricey. I think for me, I'd like to see a little bit better job polishing the bottom of that before they you know, stamp the serial number and so on on there. Speaking of which, this is individual, every razor's individually stamped with a unique serial number using the Gillette dating code system. But for me, those machining marks on the bottom are a little much. Otherwise, the razor looks phenomenal. The fit and finish is really good everywhere except for under the top cap, which is normal. Under the top cap, you're always, almost always going to have machining marks. But the bottom, it's, it's a little bit, I think a better job could have been done on that given the price of this razor. The Ambassador was about $250, this one $100 more. It's a lot of money no matter how you look at it. Now I do know Matt has been working on this razor for a number of years because he told me prior to the start of this illness that's been going around for the last couple of years, he was about to announce uh, that they were making this razor at the Big Shave Southwest like almost three years ago now or two and a half or whatever it is. And that event got canceled and he never announced this razor at that time. So. This has been a razor a long time in the making, so you do have to consider that in the price, but there's no way of getting around it. It is a very expensive razor. And some people just won't want to spend that kind of money on the razor, and that is perfectly okay. Some people will, and that's perfectly okay as well. Whenever you use something this expensive, there's always people who balk at the price. I completely understand you. However, I also understand there are other people who will want to use it 
and want to use the first ever, you know, adjustable slant razor. So what we hope is that this, this is a tremendous shaver because it looks the part except for the underside of that, um, you know, base plate. It is hard to polish a two-piece razor because it's connected under there and get it really, really great. But like I said, that's the one area where I think some improvement uh, could be made at its price because when the price is this high, you're expecting perfection. And it's not perfection in terms of fit and finish. Close everywhere else, but it's not perfection. All right, let's get into the shave because we've been yapping for five minutes, but I had to break down and cover the razor there. We have a very nice lather today. Our brush today is the Yachi uh, Synthetic. And let's get after it. Hopefully, this will be a fantastic shave. And as you can see there, we've got some nice hydration in the crown and crane here today. Very, very good soap. Very good soap indeed. Well-priced, really, really nice. I really enjoy using crown and crane and all the scents for me. I lost count. I had gotten like 12, 13, maybe 14 in a row. Uh, I haven't missed on a scent from crown and crane yet. They tend to make crowd-pleasing scents. They don't do polarizing generally. And uh, you're, you're in pretty safe hands scent-wise. Now, they don't make scent uh, with super high scent strength. So if you're someone who just has to have tremendous punch, Crown and Crane doesn't do, they're usually around medium in scent strength, which is right about where I like it. Um, I tell you what, this smells fantastic. Great, great scent. I like it a lot. All right, let's set that aside and see how we do with our console on the first view. And again, I don't know if I mentioned it, it's made in the United States. It comes with a lifetime warranty. And Matt over at uh, Rex or Razor Emporium, they do back their products. So if you have a problem, most likely he's gonna take care of it. So we'll start with one and then we'll work our way through it and see how it feels. Okay, on one, very, very little blade feel, but it does feel nice. The, in terms of the balance of the razor, the way it feels in the hand, it feels very good. And that knurling is, is terrific. Very little blade feel on one. I can tell you that right out of the gate. You're not going to get a ton of blade feel there. So keep that in mind. But it feels, feels like there's decent uh, efficiency, even with it on one. I'm going to go ahead right now and just sort of turn it up a little bit. I'm just going to turn it to three because we're going to end up in, on six, let's be honest. So let's turn it up to three. That's better. That's better. Okay, so what I'm getting here and the what folks I think are gonna want to hear is how does it compare to the ambassador? And I can tell you right now that I've moved it up on three. What you're getting in this razor is what I'm thinking by feeling it shaving is a pretty good efficiency, but not a super tremendous amount a blade feel so the overall shave is smooth that's that's the way it's coming across to me very smooth you're getting some blade feel for me it's just enough to let me know what I'm doing but it's not too much a problem with the ambassador for some is that they feel it's just a little on the rough side because it's very blade feely and especially when you turn it up this one I turned it up to three and we'll go ahead and go to four when we start this next pass um, that felt really good. I am impressed. <laughs> I was concerned, honestly. I was concerned that it would be so low in the blade feel that I wouldn't like it because I like some blade feel. Blade feel, as I always say, helps me figure out when to move on in my strokes. Like if you can feel most of the hair gone there, you know to move over a little bit, you know. And so that helps me. So zero blade feel is usually not in my wheelhouse, preference wise. But that felt pretty good. On one, out, okay, let me make another comparison for you. A similar, similarly priced razor. Actually, it's priced more. The, the Miramasa, which is near $400. Um, it, uh, on one, there's almost no blade. You don't feel anything hardly. One, settings one and two on that razor for me are almost useless. This one, not so. So it's definitely an improvement over in terms of the way it feels for me. I'm not saying it's a better razor than the Miramasa. But blade feel wise, you get just a little bit of blade feel. Now again, I don't want to lead people to believe you're getting a ton because it's not. But I got enough to at least be happy with it, um, even on one. Whereas on the Miramasa, I don't find one to be useful at all. Settings one or one or two on the Miramasa for me are throwaway uh, settings. So now we've moved up to uh, setting four there. If you can see that, yeah. And let's see how it feels. Yeah, nice. 
So what I think we're going to end up feeling here is, is um, when I get all the way up to six, is really nice efficiency, just a, a little bit of blade feel, just enough to let you know what you're doing, which for me is perfect. So what I will say is where the rubber meets the road with this razor, which is the way it feels, both in the hand, balance-wise, and the way it's cutting is superb so far. But again, first use. This is very much initial impressions. This is not a comprehensive review or anything like that, but that is really good. Really good, so I'm enjoying that a lot. And we'll do, um, on the last pass, we'll roll it on up to six. But I have to say, on, on setting four there, still not menacing. But there is some blade feel and my worry like I said before was that there would be no blade feel and I would feel like I feel about the Miramasa on settings one and two that they're just wasted settings but this one uh, I think um, a better way of explaining it if you're familiar with the feel of an ambassador which can be you know it's pretty aggressive or it can feel quite aggressive this one sort of has some really good efficiency but it doesn't present that really aggressive feel, which some people like and some people don't. So they've sort of gone, with this razor, they've gone the route of feeling smooth, feeling, um, you know, not, not menacing, uh, would be the way I would uh, explain it. And so that is good. Let's go ahead and, before we lather up, we'll go ahead and turn her up to, all the way up to six there. So this will be on max. Um, as to the slant part, does it do that much? The answer is I don't know. I really don't know if you legitimately get better cutting action out of a slant than you do a typical razor. In theory, you would, in theory, but that's just theory because I just can't, I cannot tell you here that that slant is cutting, you know, 20% 20, 20 better than a, than a razor that isn't slanted. I just can't do that. Um, does it feel great? Yes, I can tell you that. And I can tell you it feels less blade feely than the Ambassador for sure. Those things I can tell you without hesitation. But whether the slant cuts better than the Ambassador because of the slant, can't tell you. But I will say right out of the gate, if you're someone who got the Ambassador and it was way too much for you, like, oh, this is way too much, even on the lower settings, this one might be in your wheelhouse. This might have been the one you were looking for. Uh, so far, feels very nice, very smooth. And I have to say, even though I'm someone who prefers a lot of, or a good bit of blade feel, I like aggressive razors. I think I prefer the overall feel of the console. But again, that's based on, that's very much an initial impression, not a comprehensive review. You can't really tell much about something on this first use other than the way it feels. But um, So I'm not gonna tell you this is great, this is way better than Ambassador. I just can't do that, but. It does feel very good, and I am very pleasant with that, or pleased, <laughs> I should say, with that, because if it had felt like a miss, like, like again, the example for me is the Miramasa on settings one and two, almost worthless for me, this would have been a significant disappointment. Fortunately, the shave feels very nice. Uh, but again, I want to caution you people who want uber-aggressive feel, it doesn't provide that, but you do get some. It's not zero blade feel, so keep that in mind. You do feel the blade a little bit. Even on six, this one is nowhere near as blade feely as the, the Ambassador. Probably less blade feely than the Ambassador on its first couple of settings, even on six on this, so let that sort of be an, an example. But I tell you what, it's a nice, smooth shaver, um, and that's something that I really appreciate in razors. I like that smoothness. I do like the feel of the blade a little bit. Um, and this one is a, sort of similar to the Overlander razor by Carve. It has, it's come out and it is less blade feely than some of the higher plates, let's say on the Christopher Bradley, but it still manages to be efficient. I think this is like that, uh, in that it's bringing some decent efficiency without the menacing sort of blade feel. Um, and so that is a good thing. I tell you what, I think it's, I think it's really been a great shave. The way this has felt has been fantastic. Probably there's only two things um, 
about this razor that that I could balk at if I were just looking t for something to complain about. Number one, it's pricey, and there's no way around that. It just is. Many people are going, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And number two, the fit and finish on the underside of that is just not very good, um, considering the price. But otherwise, in terms of the adjustment mechanism, it's not uh, gritty. Uh, the looks, the, you know, overall general fit and finish on the parts that you see, if you don't look underneath, good. Um, overall, though, really nice shaver, and that's really the most important thing. I really enjoyed that. All right. Let me rinse and then we'll come back and get into the post. Stay tuned. And all right, we are back and off camera did a rinse to get rid of the soap and then we used our PAA alum. After applying the alum, no stinging, so super smooth shave. No necks, cuts, creepers, weepers, irritation, bubbles, or troubles. Very nice indeed. Followed the alum, we did another cool water rinse and then we tied off with our Lancaster towel prior to using the magic made by Witch's Thayer's Witch Hazel Cucumber. We had an excellent shave today with one of my favorite brands, Crown and Crane, and we'll run down the scores uh, for you. This is Barista, by the way. Cost, 4 out of 5. Scent quality, 4.5 out of 5. Scent strength, 3.5 out of 5. Ease of use, 4.5 out of 5. And overall quality, 4.5 out of 5. And that brings us to a total score of 21 out of 25, which is very good. Crown and Crane, if you haven't tried the brand, give it a try. It is very good stuff, and I enjoyed using this a lot today. I also enjoyed using the Rex console, for the first time, which is also, again, once again, it is the first ever stainless steel adjustable slant razor. I really enjoyed using it. Very nice shaver, very nice and smooth. Who is this razor for? Probably for people who bought the Ambassador and thought it was way too blade feely. So if you bought the Ambassador and that was you and you're like, ah, it's just, it's too much for me, this might be exactly what you've been looking for. However, if you're a person who requires a ton of blade feel, this may not be for you if you just want maximum aggression i think for me i would rate this one even all the way up at six um, as probably medium it, it doesn't feel menacing in any way but it is fairly efficient and it does feel smooth i enjoyed uh, my first use with this despite the fact that i tend to prefer a little more aggression it really did a great job it is definitely well made and of course rex backs it with a lifetime warranty which is cool i'd say the first run on this first impressions favorable for this razor uh, the downside again a little pricey and the fit and finish on that underside could definitely be better at the cost but otherwise very nice shaver and the first one was very very good all right uh what else did we use oh we forgot to mention we used our yachi synthetic brush and it's in our lancaster razor works brush soaking mud and we will finish it out today with fine platinum because it was indeed a fine shave this was a really fun shave today it's always nice to try something new not knowing what to expect and i was pleasantly surprised with that because i was really concerned that it was going to be so mild that i wouldn't enjoy it but fortunately we did enjoy it and i hope wherever you are today you enjoyed your shaves as well thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate it until next time i've been your host cdb reminding you it's your shave do it your way and as always god bless